Yeah, and how's it been with the, the new property and stuff? Good, all good. Stuff? When I first moved to my property, I had a whole entire neighborhood and then a whole entire, like, so all these neighbors were upset. They didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I was they, hearing about that, yeah. They were spreading all kinds of rumors because they didn't, they didn't know what was going on. They yeah, got a yeah, little bit yeah. of information and then yeah, created yeah. a narrative for the rest with their imagination. Yeah, And yeah, it turned yeah. into like, this guy's going to do a big theme park. It's going to be like a circus. Dude, He's no going to have grizzly no bears. No stuff. I mean, I didn't plan to get grizzly bears, so I could technically <laughs> get it's like, permits. I can get grizzly bears? I, like, I could mm. get a tiger permit, but no. <laughs> the whole goal is a private wildlife park for private tours and breeding yeah, endangered dude. species and also raising money for those endangered species in the wild. So right, right, right. If I'm not able to breed something that's endangered and I has it as an educational ambassador, there then, you go. then if it's just an educational ambassador and it doesn't breed, for me, then I use that to raise awareness and money for the species. For that so species, like king exactly. cobras, uh, yep. all the conservation groups in India, throughout Southeast Asia, the yep. Philippines, trying to get more attention and awareness on them yeah. so they can continue to do their job. Yeah. Because there's like countries, not a lot of people know about this because mm. we, obviously we're here in America, we don't hear about everything. Yeah. But like in uh, certain parts of Southeast Asia, the government in certain municipalities or whatever, they'll make announcements and say, yeah. bring a king cobra to us dead or alive and we'll pay you. Yeah. So then that encourages the local people to start killing these king cobras. Bummer. So the whole goal is to get everyone Damn to it. love these animals. Right, and also course. try to raise, raise enough funding to allow the people who, who for it's really hard for them to be able to get the right yeah. tools and to get the gas to go to places to relocate animals, yeah, to do all dude. this outreach and whatnot. Yeah. Those people need funding. So obviously, yeah. I, I directly would like to just send them that money. And you know what, dude? I, like, we're at the Daytona Breeders Expo, and there's thousands of people easily walk through those yeah. doors, you know? And if any of them, if any of their ticket prices, if any of the animal prices that they bought, if a fraction of that went to conservation... Oh, imagine. Dude, imagine. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. I honestly think that that's how it should be. It you should know? be that, yeah. Like, like yeah, it's, it's great. We have people, like fighting for our rights to sell reptiles and whatnot. Mm. But at the end of the day, the goal for every single person who keeps wildlife in captivity should be conservation education. Yeah. So I don't, I think it should, you know, in, in a sense, let's, let's back up for a second. This show does contribute to conservation. And the reason it does that is because for you to be able to be at this show right now right. and to sell reptiles, you must have a class three sales permit. Right. And that money goes to and the that goes to the FWC, from the FWC and that's Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Right. So in a way we all, end up donating but i think we could do more we can exactly especially no, dude, because sure. most of this stuff is exotic why don't we try to help some of these species that are endangered that we have exactly in large yeah. numbers in captivity okay As, exactly we're gonna bring that some doesn't make sense. we, we re ticks out here yeah. yeah well not here in florida well, but some of these species of lizards that are only found on certain islands and they're endemic species why not raise money for the conservation groups exactly. where they come from if you're exactly. going to be selling like things like uh cyclora that are endangered and whatnot take a percentage of your cyclora money yeah. and give it to conservation do you the, think in the that Bahamas. it's the Keeper's responsibility, or do you think it's the breeder's responsibility, or is it both? It's everyone's responsibility. Everyone's responsibility. Because if you, ha no matter what you do, no matter how many animals you have, if you breed them, if you use them for this or that, at the end of the day, if you have these animals, they're not just a showpiece for you. They should be right. an educational ambassador. Even if you don't work at a zoo and you yeah. got a snake in your house and you have family come over and your yeah, cousin's yeah, yeah. like, "Ooh, snake!" Yeah, you yeah. convince your your cousin that this exactly, snake wants nothing to do dude. with you, exactly. and it's actually a harmless animal. Exactly. And so everyone can be a. A, a wildlife warrior like Seabird yeah. would say yeah. and everyone can make a difference so everyone who owns these animals everyone mm. that associates with reptiles or nature or anything like that that yeah. should be their job to educate everyone around them and right. change opinions right I want to ask um, so, something else um, with your channel obviously you have a lot of like people that are about um you have a lot of like kids as yeah. part of your, your yeah yeah there's a lot of kids audience. I get dude honestly every age like when I come to a show yeah. or like when I'm out working out at the gym or something like every people every come every age like, comes up to me like, yeah yeah like I'll think it's a kid. I'm like, hey, kid, and then the dad will be like, oh, I'm a big fan. I'm yeah. like, oh, 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 hey, oh, what's nice up, man? to meet, nice yeah, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's all ages. I remember at one point I wanted to ask this personally. Um, you, there was a point where you, at the beginning of your channel, I guess, I'd, I'd list, watch a couple of videos every now and then. At the beginning, uh, you would free handle and we'd do stuff like that. And yeah. then there was a point in the middle where you, you were like, oh, I'm gonna stop doing this. Yeah. So and then what now we're back. What had happened was. Uh, this this is actually some behind the scenes stuff. Nobody actually knew the real reason I stopped doing that. Okay. It was no close call. It was no suddenly I believe everything I'm doing is wrong. No, okay. I've always believed in what I do. Right. You know, you never. No one should ever replicate what I do. The animals I work with are zoological animals. No right. one's no one's owning crocodiles in their house, and if they are, most likely well, it's not legal and done right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm already working with animals that are not in the in the pet sector. Okay. I work with the deadliest snakes on the planet. I work with yeah. crocodiles. I work with everything. Look, like look at me right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm healing yeah. from an eight foot Cuban crocodile bite. Yeah. So I, this is dangerous. Nobody should mimic what I do. That's why we have a warning, and that's why I always re, uh, reiterate when I'm even yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah. So what happened was I was trying. There's a lot of 
in the past couple of years, I've learned a lot. I learned a lot about what non for profits are. I've learned yeah. a lot about conservation groups. Right. And I learned about like what to do, what not to do, and to be careful with who you put all your force into. Mm. And no names, nothing like that I'm going to be throwing out. But You can throw names. We don't care. No, no, I can't <laughs> because it's going to cause more drama. You, heard, you saw what happened when I, when I said one thing about uh, make sure you don't waste your money and just start throwing it to random uh, non for profits. Let me just say to everyone who listens to this, a non for profit, they only have to take 20% of what they make mm. and give it to the cause. Right. The rest of it can be paid out to the board members, yep. the yep. people that are always there, and yep. they get they get paid as employees. So yep. Facts. I'm not going to get too much no, into that. No, it's true. But what happened with the free handling thing mm. was I was basically, this was really screwed up, I was basically being told if I want to be a part of these conservation groups, I'm not going to name the names, I would have to... Stop free handling. I would have to stop free handling. They're like, mm. we're not going to try to tell you how to do your business, but, uh, but they can't nobody likes it. free handling. I'm okay. like, okay, that's interesting coming from these people that have done it themselves and then I hear the other board members who are talking about it and all of them have free handling photos. Even one of them who's an older gentleman literally has a photo of a baby king cobra being held in front of his face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm like, come on, you guys are going to be hypocritical. Yeah, yeah. You use these animals to get people's attention, to get the conservation going. I am doing the same yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. It's not stepping on your toes. It's right. All of us should be working together. Yeah. So what happened was they're trying to like pigeonhole me, right? Okay. And they're trying to make it seem like if you don't, you, do, this, you don't do this. So yeah. it was really for a bigger leap in my career. It was gotcha. to be able to reach higher for conservation efforts yeah, and yeah, not yeah. give a crap about about that little bit. Because yeah. when it came to handling technique, I'm just like, all right, dude, yeah. whatever. Let me see if I can just work how they want me to work a little bit. And then it turned yeah, out yeah. that it was just like a little bit of cheese being dangled in front of the rat. Like, oh, we'll let you be a part of this. We'll let you be a part of this. And then it saying. kept prolonging and wasting more time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I started to find out that those people were actually working against me mm. through emails I would see to other people in other countries. Like, okay. I'd, I'd, I'd have a friend in Southeast Asia going, oh, this, the, this uh, no-name group emailed us and said that you shouldn't associate with people who do YouTube and free handle and this and that. Uh, Blah blah blah. We would never name a king cobra and, and whatnot, saying really ridiculous Gosh. things, and basically telling this shit. person in, in, a, in a third world country where it's hard to get tools and everything, where, I, where I'm telling this person I'm going to donate equipment to safely yeah. relocate animals, ship yeah. them, bag them, everything. I'm I'm offering to do all this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They're trying to say no. You don't need to take uh, tools from them. Mm. They, you, why do you have to take tools from them? And this yeah. person's going, whoa! You guys turn your backs to us when we didn't have tools. Yeah. He offered to get us tools to make it safe. And then they try to flip and say, well, we don't want free handling. We don't want free handling there. Yeah. One, we're Americans. We're over here in America. We don't live in Southeast Asia. Mm. Why are we going to tell these people how to live? Mm. Why are we going to tell these people what to do? Mm. We're not uh, We're not part of the government there. Yeah. We're just some dudes here in America. Yeah. We should all be working together to help for conservation efforts. Like, yeah. There's no reason for every, everyone to hold each other back. So yeah. basically what happened was I wanted to be a part of a bigger conservation effort. Learned it was just cheese in front of my face. Yeah. And then I realized what I have to do to make real conservation work happen is to get the views. Is to do it is to, to do get, the thing. Get those views, get the money yeah. and, and and put it towards one that. on one help the people in those countries yeah. instead of wasting my fucking time with people trying to hold me back. Yeah. Because believe it or not, lots of conservationists can have a great heart. But there are also but a lot of conservationists that, that are not keep other right conservationists thing. from getting anything done. Yeah. Show me, uh, explain to me well, how well, the I thing would is be that they're, harm. In they're in competition constantly. They're yeah, trying to get everyone's like, money. It's, like, it's dude, not at a bad thing. No but one's like, ever going to be like Irwin again, or no one's ever going to be David Attenborough again. Like those people yeah. got us into it. We should all be inspired by those people. We should all work For together. Sure. But then I started to learn that people will work against you behind yeah. closed doors. They will say things yeah. behind closed doors. And I had plenty of evidence put in front of my face to say, okay, yeah. I'm going to solely help conservation groups in the native countries of these animals, and I will not get yeah. tied up with conservation groups here. For sure. There are great ones, but just yeah. like... Um, just like all that Red Cross stuff and all when whenever like something would happen in Haiti and then you, people would be like, oh, watch where your money goes because some of these non-profits don't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So what I'm doing now it's is hard. I'm raising my own money and I'm getting tools and equipment to give to people in Southeast Asia so they can mm. properly handle and relocate these animals right. and also afford to get the equipment to educate, do outreach, pamphlets, yeah, yeah, whatnot. Yeah. On top of that, going and be a part of relocation in villages and teaching yeah, the people yeah. in person. So yeah. my whole goal is breed endangered species at my place, right. educate in person, yeah. and to and raise money for the you're animals. And the one who has the full authority on where the money is going. Exactly. So I'm yeah. hitting conservation on the head with a hammer three different ways. You know, mm. breeding the species, educating people, and raising money and funding for the native exactly. range of these animals. There you go, man. And that's it's all good that stuff. Matters. It's good stuff. You know, speaking of drama, do you want to talk about nerd? Uh, no, dude. I don't even <laughs> want to give them attention because, like, I look at what I do and look what they do. Why, why are we even talking, you know? Yeah. Not fair. you and me. But no, like, no, no, but yeah, but yeah. Like, People who inbreed reptiles for morphs mm. versus a person who's trying to wear, raise funding and awareness for conservationists. Yeah. Uh, what 
does why are we even talking? Why are they talking? You know, like when yeah. they got that white king cobra, what was it going to be used for? They were gonna they were gonna try to reproduce it, take yep. its babies that were het for leucistic, and yeah, breed them, breed to them the together. Mom. Yep. That's not conservation. Yep. So I don't. I, I'm not gonna waste my time putting too much on this because this will just be another video. There for you go. Day. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. This, this will just be like another bit. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's asking me about uh, the people who live in the snow, the snow people. <laughs> the snow people. But at the end of the day, we're all blessed, dude. We live down yeah. here in Florida. It's the best weather ever. I get to yeah. work with crocodiles on a daily basis. I get to go into a king cobra enclosure and clean the enclosure. I get to live my life to the fullest, and I get mm. to help educate people and get them to love these animals as well. Yeah. Instead of making it a whole fear monger thing. Because exactly. at the end of the no, day, yeah, I didn't name my king cobra some murder name i gave him the name kevin because to want, make him more amicable we want for people. people to look at these animals and not give them like personification like well, we're not going to act no, like this right, thing's right, tame right. or anything but this thing has a soul this thing feels pain it's this alive thing it's a part a of the living ecosystem animal, yeah and it needs to have mental enrichment it needs to live a good life yeah yeah. yeah. And, and you're building the big enclosure farm right too just spent nice dude ten thousand dollars on this thing yeah, 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 and i am bankrupt so please buy my merchandise <laughs> chaleswildlife.com yeah well we'll see you man nice to meet you uh what was y'all's name again uh, yeah, just check me out. Check me out on uh, YouTube, Chandler's Wildlife, it's for the main content. Check me out on Patreon to support a little bit extra. You can just donate a couple bucks and get exclusive content. Mm. And also, if you buy T-shirts and stickers, that helps with the cause of building out my facility. And also helps fund projects for, like, example, buying tools for people in other countries to safely yeah. relocate venomous snakes. For sure, dude. So, conservation through and through. Yeah. Reptiles are the best. You guys are the Anytime. best. Yeah. Thanks for letting me Enjoy, be on. Man. Thank you so much for watching. For the full episode of this Reptiles With podcast live at the Daytona Beach National Reptile Breeders Expo, click the link down in the bio.